All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to another edition of JM Lectures. Finally, the sequel has come out right now. My name's Jay Yapper. Most of the people know me by Jacob, and I'm part of the JML group here at Monish. We've been playing a lot of Smash Brothers Ultimate right now, and so we wanted to make another series of lectures about sort of low to mid-level problems that people have been having. And so this one is going to be about sequences and not input. So I already know what you're going to ask me. What is a sequence? So sequences, I've got a formal definition here, Webster, are a series of inputs designed to solve a specific problem. So let's try and break that down a bit more. So a series of inputs. So as we know, a lot of characters, we got a lot of toolbox sort of options that we have. So various tools, for example, one of them is full hop, landing nest, spot dodge, grab. So a lot of characters can do this, especially if they have a very safe nair. Looking at you, Joker. So they can just jump up, apply pressure, and then when they experience uh, retaliation from their opponent, they just spot dodge and grab right up close. Some tools are very uh, ubiquitous in that way, and so they can use it a lot. Other tools, a bit more nuanced, sometimes character specific. Jab one, dash back, turn around, grab, into down throw, into sliding up smash, right? It's pretty complicated, but it's still a series of inputs, right? And it's so still a sequence. It might not be true either, right? So opponents can still get hit by the jab one, and whilst you're dashing back, you they can roll out or they can jump, right? So it doesn't have to be true, but in some situations it does work. Try and guess what kind of character would do that sort of sequence. Bit of a extension question. Other moves, pretty pretty simple. They don't have to be too complicated. Roll behind down smash was a classic that JML experienced in Smash 4, and a lot of people just didn't know how to do it. So I'd like to thank, shout out to Cameron Quack for developing the meta a little bit further. Um, I'm glad that we got to experience the roll behind down smash. And some tools, they're just the hammer, right? Just hit forward smash three times in a row. Your opponent won't be expecting it. It'll kill them probably if they're high enough percent. That's cool. So as you can see, series of inputs, a lot of different options that you can pick from it. So now, sequences are also designed to solve a problem. So we can classify the design space in Smash and a lot of other fighting games as a sort of field between micro game and macro game, right? So micro game, we have the small interactions, things that have a more obvious answer. So we've got frame data, execution skill, technical skill, having optimized combos, right? So these are small things that we can work on and it's normally either a yes or no question. Is F tilt, does it have enough frames to beat move A or move B? It's either yes or it's either no, right? Do I have, have enough time to shield this? Can I roll? Can I spot dodge out of this? So that's part of the micro game. Macro game is more subjective sort of answers. So things like conditioning, player expression, and how we choose to play advantage and disadvantage, right? So there are questions that are a lot harder to answer with just a yes or no. And whilst you might have an answer that you think is really good, your opponent can also have another great answer that's valid in their own sort of way. So where do sequences, where do they fit in this sort of design space? Well, I think the best way to use sequences is that they are built from small and micro game things and simple inputs, and then we turn them into making macro decisions. That sequence that we saw before earlier would be really good in terms of pressuring our opponent and conditioning them, right? So we take small inputs, we take our frame data knowledge that we have, we have our execution, and we turn it into something that applies to our conversation deeper into a game or a set. So what's next? Let's talk about the anatomy of a sequence, right? So let's say you have, going back to our previous example, jump and landing aerial. So you'll see this a lot. Almost everybody does. It's not only in Smash, but in so many other fighting games, right? It's aggressive, it gives stage control, and it makes our opponent have to react in terms of our pressure. We also have something called Spot Dodge and Punish, which is a classic, right? Everybody does this too. So it works if our opponent is trying to grab or attack us at that very moment. If we can say, our opponent is going to attack right now or going to grab right now, I'm going to choose a Spot Dodge and then do something right after to hit them but you can get baited pretty easily. So what if we combine the two into a more cohesive package, right? Jumping and landing aerial forces our opponent to be more defensive and then try and punish us afterwards. And then spot dodge sort of covers that jump and landing aerial. It protects us if we combine them into a full sequence. 
we're allowed to pressure shield and then we can bait an attack and then punish them properly. And in the future, our opponents may be conditioned to let us continue doing this sort of pressure. Maybe next time we'll jump and landing aerial and then they remember what happened last time so they're not going to punish us, right? And we get to continue doing our aggression. And everybody wants to attack shield, don't they? So always a win-win. So let's have a look at this in motion. So Leo versus Tweak, this is, I think, yeah, Frostbite 2020. So it's quite a while ago, actually. But this is back when they still had locals. So M MK Leo is the Joker that you see in the middle of the screen. And Tweak is the wolf down at the bottom. So MK Leo, he jumps up, full pops, lands that Nair. And then Tweak tries to spot the, or Tweak tries to grab. Is unsuccessful, right? Because he's spot dodge, right? He's buffered that in. He's already guessed that Tweak was going to grab anyway. And then he's able to get a punish of his own, right? He gets to grab. So you might be thinking, oh wait, only pros do this sort of thing, right? Only the highest of the highest level are capable of doing this thing. But that's not true, right? Let's take a much earlier set of Ernest versus Vinny. With Ernest on the Lucina, the classic Lucina, and Vinny as Joker, right? So Vinny full hops uh, Ernest as he's trying to get up from ledge. Ernest forced to shield this. So he shields the nair pressure, especially with um, with Arsene on deck as well. So it's a lot stronger. And then same sort of thing. Ernest tries to grab Vinny, he's able to spot dodge, and he would be able to punish future. So it works not only for the pros, right, but also for a mid-level of JML. So what are the benefits of sequences? Why even do them in the first place? So sequences are very, very deliberate, right? We come up with sequences and we know all the individual parts of a sequence. And they help us answer problems as well, right? So they're deliberate solutions to the problems that we face in game. So let's say your opponent is always doing an option X. Maybe he's always throwing projectiles at you, right? Or he's always shielding every single time. Or maybe every time he finishes something up, he's always rolling, right? So we can invent prior sequences that would beat this sort of motion. And we always have improvisation as a sort of backup, right? We can always think up sequences on the fly. But let's say your opponent is always doing option X, maybe he's throwing up projectiles, and then let's say sequence A is like just shielding it, sequence B is you jumping in and hitting him for it, or sequence C is like rolling around, right, or throwing your own projectile. So let's say we choose sequence B, let's say we always jump in, and every time they throw projectiles, we always jump in, jump in, jump in. This is a classic of conditioning, right? So your opponent's going to do something a bit different. And now they're going to try and swatch you out of the air instead of throwing projectiles. My opponent is now always countering sequence B. Every time he throws a projectile, maybe he's doing a sequence of his own, right? Maybe he's jumping up and hitting you out of the air because he knows you want to jump in. So when we see that, that he's countering sequence B, my wording is very deliberate. I'm trying to say he's not countering us as a player. He doesn't have a full read on us. He just knows that we're doing this one specific thing. So why don't we just stop doing that one specific thing, right? The sequence is easy to remember and easy to use once. We just don't have to do it anymore and we maybe use a different sequence, right? Maybe later, in as the game progresses, sequence B can come back. But right now, we need to discount it and think of other options, other methods that we can do. And this is the real fun of fighting games, right? This being able to choose and being able to be deliberate with our options is the real fun of the fighting game, right? And that's true for any fighting game you play, whether it be Smash, whether it be Street Fighter, whether it be, I don't know, Dive Kick, right? Any fighting game will have this sort of thing. It also reduces the mental stack. Now, I know that this is more of a Street Fighter sort of chart that you see on your screen right now, but the same thing sort of applies, right? When we have a sequence, we are doing a specific motion and we know that those inputs are going to counter one specific thing, right? So next time when your opponent is throwing out fireballs all the time, you can just say, oh, I'm going to jump in, I'm going to full hop, and then fair him, right? And that's just one whole package in itself. We're chunking that data. We're not thinking of the individual inputs because that's only what a computer would really think. We're thinking, I'm going to jump in and hit him, and it'll be so much easier on our muscle memory now that we've practiced it and we know specifically what we want. Okay, cool. So let's have a look at some sequences in just general settings, right? So sequence is an advantage, right? Let's say you hit your opponent above the stage and you're on ground, right? So you have a lot of options that you can move around and do. You can either jump to chase them or you can choose to stay grounded as well, right? 
And then you, again, from jumping, your sequence can change as well. Maybe you want to instantly aerial them, right? And that'd catch them for being a bit lazy. Or you can stay on grounded still and do a grounded punish, right? Each of these sequences here, if you read them from left to right, they all have their benefits, right? For example, what I said earlier, instantly aerial can catch opponents doing nothing, right? If they choose not to air dodge, if they pick a laggy option, instant aerial would beat that. If you have a delayed option, you can catch opponents air dodging by if they try and avoid the pressure. And then further still, you can do more non-committal options like fast falling immediately and then starting the sequence again. Or if you stay grounded, you can hit them with a grounded punish like an F smash or something that isn't as strong, but is still a lot safer. So if you think your opponent, you don't have enough reads on them yet or that you don't have enough information to really enact anything, staying grounded is still really super safe, right? But from only a couple of options, we get a lot of different paths that we can take, which is the real important thing. I know a lot of younger or earlier players, they think that the sort of flow of the game is really hard to follow. But when in actuality, you're only putting the things you know, and then you're combining them again into each other. That's the beauty of sequences. So let's have a look at disadvantage, right? Let's say you're at ledge hang, right? And you have those four main options that you get. I didn't include like drop off ledge because I think that was a bit more advanced, but that's still included in terms of your sequence flow chart. So we have the basic ones here, but what are you going to do afterwards, right? It's still very open-ended. So here are a couple ones that I came up with. If you want to control center stage almost immediately, you can combine like roll with another roll, right? And you're mid stage for most stages. Or you can jump and double jump, and that avoids a lot of pressure. If your opponent is holding things very aggressively, you can roll and hope that they're holding very close, and then attack them for it, right? And you immediately gain stage control. Or you can get up attack with the right timing, and then you can dash to chase them as well. Other options are things like neutral get up into shield, is if you're unsure about their pressure, or you can jump and then land onto a platform, for example, if you're playing Battlefield or Smashville. So again, you normally only have four options from ledge hang, but it's the things that you combine it with that become really interesting. Right. And you can immediately tell in a match, you can say, look, he's been covering my jump all the time, right? So this time I'm just going to go away. I'm going to roll and then roll again, right? And I'll be super safe. I got center stage. Um, Ernest told me all, all about how good center stage was. So I'm going to hold it like that, right? Or you can say, I, my opponent is at like 150 and I'm only at 30, right? I think I should just roll an attack, right? Because the risk reward is already really good. So you can make these really interesting decisions, more macro decisions, just from very, very basic options, right? And lastly, in neutral, this is where things get a bit complicated, right? So I tried to choose some things like bait and punish, right? Everybody knows that you have to dash in, dash out. And then when your opponent tries to go in, they'll whiff and then you punish them for it. So in that sort of scenario, the traditional dash in, dash out, maybe you'd follow that dash out with something crazy, like a turnaround forward smash, right? And punish them super duper hard for it. Or if you've got a really good turnaround grab, you can just grab them for it. Super easy, right? Next time when your opponent is a bit more scared to sort of jump into your bait and punish, you can punish them for standing still. You can hit them with a dash attack or if they want to just shield, they're a bit uncomfortable, you can grab them, right? And all through you still get options for your classic defensive options. So you have shield, you have spot dodge, roll in and roll out. And see how things are more aggressive or more defensive depending on where they're put. So if you dash in and then you roll in again, that can be seen as very, very aggressive, right? Because you're covering so much distance away. Whereas if you dash out and then roll out again, that means that you want to separate yourself even further than you already are. And then you can mix them up interchangeably to be a bit uh, foxy. So how do we create and how do we practice these sequences? So there are two ways of making sequences, right? There's a top-down method of problem solving sort of things. I've taken this, uh, this sort of terminology from uh, Magic the Gathering, if you've ever played that. So top-down is where we start with a problem and then we're trying to solve it using a sequence, right? So this is your traditional sort of my opponent keeps on throwing fireballs at me or my opponent keeps on jumping in and hitting me with an aerial, right? So you might go back into the lab and you might say, hmm, what kind of things would beat 
jump-ins, right? What sort of things beat fireballs all the time? What kind of moves, what am I doing specifically that's making my opponent be conditioned to what they're doing right now? What, am I standing in shield all the time? Is my opponent saying that I'm very cowardly and just like copying fares and like lasers all the time, every single time? So maybe what I could do, right, is I could sh pretend I'm shielding and then jump up and then anti-air them before they get a chance to, right? So we can build our sequences off of that. Another thing is, is that there are a lot of ways around simple things as well. So for fireballs, example, I can t think of at least three at the top of my head. So you can jump over fireball, you can shield it still and run at them, or you can like roll around as well, right? Some characters do get the options of just like just shielding and then like reflecting it as well. So there are other things to think about as well that are more character specific that I'll leave you guys to think about. So that's the first method. Second method is bottom up. So we've got the inputs themselves and then we're trying to make a sequence out of them, right? Just raw sequences, experimentation. And we, yeah, creating a sequence based on theory crafting and playing around with the moves that we do have already. So you need to think, what are the limitations of this move? How can I fit it in with all the other moves that I've got to create a cohesive sequence? I did this with Corin side B. So with side B, you can drift around still. You can move around a lot. Like you're not limited to just a simple arc. You can also shoot your pin out at almost any time, right? So you're not limited with that. The kick that you're given with the core inside B is really good. It's like a monkey flip, right? If you do it grounded, right? So your simple moves and simple specials have a lot of different tweaking around with it that you can do. And you need to think about what might this be good for, right? This is essentially a form of labbing, right? And you're not labbing combos, you're labbing the limitations of your character. You can also have a look at different VODs, right? You can see what sequences top level players are already doing, right? Things that aren't necessarily true, but they seem to be catching a lot of other high level players, right? Why are they doing that sort of thing? What are they doing to make it work, right? Where are they positioned beforehand before they, they can do it? What are they doing previously? What are they doing after? So there's a lot of different questions that you can do to eventually make up these sequences. The main thing though, is especially at a very low level, both methods require muscle memory and lab time to properly be effective before you can implement them in game. It's great to think up and write down a sequence, but there's no point if you what you're going to do is resort to habits. Habits are another form of sequences, but they're sort of things that we're not controlling. They're not deliberate, right? They don't really solve, they solve a problem that works once, but then when that problem goes away and you're presented with another problem, habits may or may not help you through that. So that's why I'm advocating sequences like this. So there are some limitations, right? What I'm approaching this from is from that mind, body, and sort of heart perspective of things. You've all heard of laughs theory. And so sequences are very much rooted in the mind, right? We are having problems, right? We're identifying problems, but then we also have issues of coming up with a very rigid solution, right? And sometimes in fighting games, especially, the solution is more fluid. It's not exactly a problem A has solution A, a problem B has solution B. There's like a many to one or a one to many sort of relationship with those sort of things. Even if you aren't a mind-based player, if you think that you're more of a heart-based player, it's important to realize that a lot of top level is like a solid mixture of all three, right? So for example, MK Leo, right? Not only does he have those hard reads from the heart, but he's also mechanically skilled enough to sort of follow around and do things like up air loops, right? Or is analytical enough to know when his opponent is messing up, right? Or is falling back to a habit. So it's structure is something that you should definitely consider. And it's something that you should definitely try and implement. And sequences are a great way of doing it. Okay. So that's a fair amount of information. I've been talking for about 20 minutes or so. So I'll just give you a quick TLDR and some key takeaways, right? The sequences, as I said at the top of the lecture, they're a series of inputs designed to solve a specific problem, right? A series of inputs, which is that micro game sort of aspect, designed to solve a specific problem, which is that macro game sort of conditioning and advantage disadvantage. They can simplify how you think about the game. And it's what I said earlier, right? So sequences can also streamline 
how and what you need to learn, right? You need to take from others, right? A good artist always steals, right? So you need to see what the top players are doing and then make it your own, right? Sometimes you might not be able to pull off a really complicated sequence, but you can do the next best thing. You can also diagnose your own problems from yourself and review both in-game as well as from outside, just labbing. And lastly, sequences can't solve all your problems, right? They are good from an analytical point of view, but sometimes when you are locked into a very fast-paced situation, sometimes you just need to listen to your instincts, right? But having that structure beforehand, being comfortable with a previous structure is super duper vital, right? And that's the main thing that I want to impart is that having sequences means you have structure, having structure means you have a clear win condition and having a clear win condition means that you can eventually win the game, hopefully. All right. So thank you for listening. I got to plug the, the people back at home. So please subscribe to JML League, subscribe to me and subscribe to Connor Mass Cafe. He's been very vital in helping us run the JM lectures and he'll be running them for weeks or months to come. So thank you very much. The end of my presentation, I'm going to tab out and say later. Lovely. Nice. Questions, questions, fellas, questions. Anyone? I know what I'll ask my God, just for the sake of asking it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, would you be able to share, like, the link to the slides? Because I think it'd be handy to have, like, as a reference. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's all getting, it's thing. all getting uploaded on YouTube, right? Yeah, there's the, there's the VOD as well, but we can upload slides and stuff. Um, we also have the, the notes originally for, um, the stuff that we kind of based it off as well. I feel, um, yeah, yeah. That'd be uh, helpful. To can you go back on. to the top down? Yeah, sure. Um, slide. Mm-hmm. Where am I? Yeah, yeah, this one. Oh yeah, sweet. I'm already on it. Wow. My question is, where'd you learn to make such good looking PowerPoints? I know, right? I mean, like Google, Google does that sort of thing. Um, in terms of top down and bottom up, it's a very Magic of the Gathering sort of thing. So mm, top yeah, down design, figured, yeah. yeah. So it's the idea of like flavor versus mechanics, right? So top down is like you know, on a Magic card, you've got the picture and the title on top, and then you've got the card rules on the bottom, right? It's a good mm. way of describing it. So top down is considering all the flavor first, right? One time they were building a set, they wanted to make a set around vampires, right? And like werewolves and stuff. So the rules reflected the idea of vampires and werewolves, right? So it's coming up with a problem first and then creating solutions mechanically how to do that. Bottom up is the opposite, right? We have tools already in our disposal. So how else can I use those tools, right? I think and I'll... Yeah, def- oh, sorry, go Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, sorry. This I is think... like deck building theory, right? Yeah. Um, it's yeah, more yeah. about, it's not necessarily deck building theory, but it's more like set, even like making up the cards, right? Is what they oh, do. Yeah. This was yeah. a method too. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Right? Then I thought about like the competitive like aspect. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. All right. So do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, uh, I don't have, I actually don't like, I don't know. That's. I just think it's like. I. I never thought of it that way. That's why I was like looking at it. I think it's. It um, honestly looks. I, I think it's pretty. I think it's an all right. Like I. I like the creativity about it. I think it's similar to like um how when you and Jonas did reverse mains Ernest, you're like oh I completely forgot that tool existed and I can start implementing it that way again. If that makes did sense. Did we? You weren't even there. No, but I read the the <laughs> game's text later. But yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. He was vicariously there. <laughs> all right. Um. Jacob, I've got a question. Yes. All right. Um, do you, for like lower level players, do you recommend one or the other in regards to top down or bottom up? Hmm. Good question. I think if you're receiving problems and like you're getting VOD review of that, top down is definitely a good like way to start up. receiving can problems. You, can you repeat oh. that? Sorry. Can you hear me now? Am I okay? Was I lagging? You sound up? fine. I think. You're fine. Oh, it's just uh, earnest. Oh, hmm. All right, so with if I had to pick one or the other, I think you'll find a lot more success with top-down 
because those are actual problems that you'll be facing. When you reach more experience and you figure out from your experience of solving top-down problems, it might be better to look into bottom-up and starting to anticipate the problems you may or may not be facing, right? That's my nutshell answer of how I do that. So top-down first, solve your problems that you already have, that you're already suffering, because as a low-level player, it'll be almost overwhelming, the amount of problems that you're facing and things you don't know how to deal with. And then, once you get a solid footing, try and move on to bottom-up, see how far you can push your tools. Does that make sense, Jonas? Uh, yeah. I was thinking that, because generally when you are teaching a new player, Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things you say is that you have to be familiar with your character, right? You have right. to know what your character's moves do so that you can get the combos you want. So that sounds like what we encourage regularly is a very bottom-up approach. Mm -hmm. Where like, So do you think that that's the wrong approach and we should be looking, we should be prioritizing top-down? Well, that's, that's a good point. Your answer yeah. did surprise me because I thought mm -hmm. that uh, bottom-up should be where you start. Like, when you're just new to the game, right. like, new to um, the character. Maybe that was my closed-minded thinking of what bottom-up is, right? So, thank you for bringing that up. So, yes, I think definitely, like, before you play a character, a lot of characters will, will jump into training mode and sort of, like, play around with things. And, in a sense, that is bottom-up. But it's very shallow in that sort of way. When I think of bottom-up, I think of, like, going a lot further with what your character can do, right? Even just the basic stuff, like... For example, like I was just labbing out, um, by the way, for this question, what did I say earlier? That one, I was thinking of um, Samus, because I'm pretty sure she can, like... I knew run. it! <laughs> <laughs> I think Olimar does work, doesn't it? Yeah, sliding off smash is one of those things where it's like, look, it has like a very 45 degree angle hitbox, so maybe it does catch like no no DI jab, or no DI, right? Nice one, Jackson. Good job. Nice one, Jackson. You <laughs> did it. Olimar might work, I'll have to think about that. I just don't play Olimar, right? So yeah, bottom up. Never seen a Samus do sliding off smash, but it's yeah, pretty work. Zero percent. It, could, it could, work. could work. Yeah. So, um, it's very tight. But with bottom up, right, what they're doing is very simple, and I don't think that's enough to really warrant real experimentation, right? Spending a lot of time like thinking about how your moves link up with each other. I think it's also like um. How new is the player you're describing, Jonas? Yeah, like, I was like, gonna say. I think it, there's like there's levels to it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what the what level your the player is depends on which one you should prioritize. Yeah, and yeah. you're thinking of a very very new sort of player. Very right? new. I would say like, uh, like bottom up, right? Right. I, and I, I would agree say. with you. Yeah, bottom up. For but for still low level players, players who sort of know already what their buttons do. I think you definitely do top down is a lot better if you're looking for very fast improvement. Yeah. Right. I was gonna say that I really agree with what Trent said in the chat, by the way. What did Trent say in chat? <laughs> yeah, I was saying that um so I feel there's a middle ground between like the level of player yeah. that you're um appealing to. Because you could have someone that just picks up the game mm -hmm. and you could say from that point of view, we still encourage a bottom up um perspective of just getting familiar with your character exploring what their options are their entire kit and shortly after that when you start sort of going into games you sort of have a feel of how to recover how to do like maybe one two combos true combos then you start experiencing some problems and that's when you incorporate the top down approach right and then only after you sort of explored more through that and you start becoming like a more competent mid-level high level player then you go back to that bottom up and start thinking outside of the box mm -hmm. Important yeah. takeaway is that you can't do one or like it has to be both. It has to be both, yeah. It has but, to be both. Yeah. But the I think I think the point we're all alluding to is like is like mm -hmm. uh it's kinda like a step by step basis. And like the mm -hmm. higher up you go or like the more you'd wanna yeah. I think the higher up you go, the more you start to interchange between the both of them, right? Especially when you're bridging that gap from it's hard because yeah, yeah, it's hard because it's like if you see it through absolute, like like ab like in their most extreme forms, then it's mm -hmm. really it's it's hard to like um really like pinpoint which one's like important. But like they're both like kind of how you improve because you need yeah. you need a bottom up to like 
maximize like your character's potential or your cap right mm -hmm. and like they're kind of also interlinked in that problem solving can only go so far um with your experimentation as well like your, your bottom up because if you don't if you don't like like theory craft like your character's tools enough then you'll like you'll like you won't figure out there's more answers to things to right Mm -hmm. And you're limited, a top-down approach is limited to the problems you face, right? And like, if you only face certain yes. types of problems, yes. you're only going to come up with answers to those problems. Yeah, so problems. it's like you, big fish, small pond. Yeah, exactly. It's like right. if you play JML people all the time, you're right. only going to be, you're only going to grow so much as a player because yeah. you may develop good problem solving, but you're only, you're playing as the same problems mm -hmm. over and over what I will say to the, the less experienced players is that you really do need muscle memory, right? Muscle memory means that you're not thinking about your controller anymore. It means you're thinking about the game, right? And so you do need to practice. If, you, if you're lucky enough to own the game and have a copy of it and to dedicate some time into the game, then you do need to practice dumb things like, I don't know, like fair into roll, right? Or fair into spot dodge, right? Even basic stuff like that because you can't trust your brain to immediately do it, right? Yeah, yep. that's that's one thing I like a lot about the concept of sequences, such that you can technically write out like the quote unquote sequences for all types of situations of what happens if I land in there and they di in in a way and stuff like that. And you have dedicated sequences that you have muscle memory down for um, to already know and understand. And all you have to do is not necessarily think about what you're doing, but just know the general sequence that you're going to be falling into depending on what your opponent's doing. Um, yeah. So it's like a very streamlined process of, okay, these are the problems, these are my solutions, now I'm going to practice these solutions and implement them into my play. So I yeah. really enjoy that. All right. Gravity, yeah. do you uh, have a question? Oh, yeah. We had another question from Gravity, I was going to say. Hmm? Yeah, I'm sorry. My question is just like, as far as sequences are concerned, how do we know, like, what's the best way to practice and learn? when we should apply a specific sequence because like the only time i can really figure out the way i feel like we can figure that out or the best way to figure that out is just general like field practice like uh yeah just like almost like a bottom-up approach just like figure right. out uh when you're finding your opponent which one works yeah yeah so what's the best way to practice and learn any specific sequence like when to use it mm -hmm. So how to practice when to actually use it in the game, right? Yeah. So again, I think, yeah, with problem solving, we want to use the sequence against that problem when we, we're going to see it next, right? Mm. So you also need to think about, your, like, your opponent is also probably doing sequences, right? That's the beauty of the system, is that you use the sequences to beat the sequences, right? So your opponent is always, like, what's it called? Like, if he's always, like, hitting you with wolf laser and then always anti-airing you, you should be conditioned by the wolf laser and then implement your sequence after wolf laser, right? Yeah. So if you like, like you roll around and you do something else, so you anti-air them first, right? With bottom-up, you, sh you can think about like what your sequence would already cover, right? So if I do something as Lucina, like I do like fair into up air, right? Fair into immediately jumping up air, you can be mm, this up air box would cover up a jump, right? So if my opponent is shielding, and I know they always jump after shielding, I should, could be able to use this, right? Or you can do like fair into shield breaker and be like, my opponent just likes to hold shield all the time, right? Yeah. And then do things like that, right? So Does basically, that make more sense? So it's like, it's you need like to- figure out, yeah. Yeah, I definitely recommend having a notebook handy and then like you make up some sequences and then like, see what they would cover or like what would be the optimal what's the worst thing that your opponent could do to be caught by this right and then you can right, yeah. sort of yeah because like there's no right or wrong answer if that makes sense there are sequences that beat other things and there are sequences that don't right all you need to do is match things up right yeah, so I guess, like, matching your, like, knowing what your sequences are capable of and looking at their sequences and figuring out which one of yours can beat theirs, basically. Mm -hmm. 
again it's a very like uh responsive sort of way or reactive sort of way of playing the game and then but then you can once you have a solid reactive game you can transfer that into playing more actively right and proactively yeah right. okay yeah but analysis is also really cool to like mm-hmm. pinpoint specific scenarios of like why didn't this work right and then you could just go off of that of what would have worked instead and so on so, yeah. one thing that i did a lot when i was playing smash 4 because i didn't have the game and like um i was also like doing vod analysis but more importantly i was just like theory cropping a lot about specific like instances and sequences and being like in my head knowing both properties this should theoretically work and like doing a lot of like just like mental work where you just like don't need to expend that much effort right you're not really like going somewhere you're not really watching something but just thinking about like like in your head oh this this is this is this could work or this can't or i think if um this property hits this property then blah blah blah, blah. just doing that a bunch like can go a long way as well okay like um i know for a fact that um during the first year right i would like study a lot about like a lot of characters different move sets and interactions to a point where it's kind of like meme right like people would be like oh Ernest, blah 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 what's the frame of this blah blah blah, blah. right because you don't have i don't have anything else but because of that i kind of like figured like some things will like would just work and it was like intuitive it didn't like it's just like oh yeah this makes sense you know and then i'd ask other people and they would be like oh really and i'm like you should know this so <laughs> All right. Any other questions? So you mean like? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So you just, you mean just with Ernest was saying, like, you mean like just thinking even like before bed, like not just but, through uh, like yeah, video yeah. analysis, yeah, just anywhere, any, every just day, like, like yeah, every when day. if you're just doing anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like in in the shower, I'm like, hmm, mm-hmm. maybe I could like, like do a jab into side B as Bowser. And it'll yeah. fucking work because I've done yeah. jab one and two, or like everyone holds shield, right? So yeah, yeah or even like when I was work. playing Karin, like I was thinking about like pin, right? And it's normally quite a it's sort of a rigid sort of move because you only get a couple options out of it. But I was like, hey, look, if I pin and then like go forward, right? I go really far. Maybe it can just be like Diddy Kong, right? And just like slide across off the stage and then like turn around side B, or yeah, and like do a bunch of other options, right? So you need to spend that time thinking about it, like, oh, like, what if I don't pin, right? And I just go for a tomahawk grab out of it, right? That'd be crazy. I've done that in set before, so it's like, it works, right? The, yeah. the time you spend in playing this game, even if you're not doing it as effectively as you are, you're still improving, right? You're still, like, getting more used and more comfortable to the the mechanics and, like, the environment of the game. So what I've outlined is, like, one of the more efficient ways of doing it but even just spending time to think and just like think about the game is is enough right sometimes it's more than enough so yeah hey cool thanks like i think of sorry to tangent but like one of the biggest like the i'm gonna most stop streaming by the way oh, okay. biggest like offenders or not offenders but like indicators for this was when i realized i could just like tomahawk and like hit people because i was like oh all i'm doing is just like um, landing aerials a fuck ton, right? And my character just functions off this. So what if I decided to just like, if they're trying to parry or they're trying to out of shield me, I can just land on them, pretend like I'm gonna do a falling aerial. They'll like drop shield and I can just F smash them. And I was like, I tried it in friendlies, right? Cause you have to do that. You have to like see if your theory works mm-hmm. and then it worked. And I was like, oh shit, like this is cool. Now, now this was just ingrained in my muscle memory cause I do it all the time now. So. <laughs> And if you're not comfortable not, doing yeah. it yet in friendlies, just like do it on a training dummy. Do it ten times on a training dummy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Your muscle like, memory will like flow through. The most um the best sort of sequences like I find fu- I found from experience come from your own intuition, not from like bond analysis, because it's just like you like thought about it yourself. You know, it makes sense to you. Like stuff that I've watched from other players, right? Like don't come as naturally. Although like that's not to discredit 
that like vote analysis at all. But it's just to say like um, this sort of stuff is like so easy to do with such little like cost, but it's like super important. And I don't think people like mid level or low level don't do it enough. So mm-hmm. yeah, your own ideas are always going to make the most sense to yeah. yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's they, a they good way of putting it. Your own ideas are going to make the most sense to you, right? They, they don't have to make sense like, to anybody else. Creative license as well, or like creativity. <laughs> Yeah, you won't get caught for plagiarism if you use your own ideas. It's cool, right. you know. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Right. Any other questions? Always happy to answer them. Um, if you want to post them on like Learn to Play, oh, yeah, I'm sure the rest of the guys would be happy to do that too. Sure. Yeah, feel free to feel free to unmute. Yeah, yeah, do you know Discord? Problem. Discord I've got been an update. Ages, so. where, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I can hear your. I thought I thought phones. we were gonna be unmuted like after the. the yeah, me too, man. Everyone, <laughs> I should have clarified. Everyone's shy. No, yeah, are you are you are you still recording? Or yeah, what? this is the, like the back of the classroom hours right now. Like guys, yeah, what's yeah. going on? No, I'm checking. Right. After yeah. class, we're going yeah. up to the teacher's desk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to help out a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I need help on this problem. I need make <laughs> a secret. Teacher, I need help with this problem. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. Um that then okay. unless well, no one else says oh sorry sorry i'm so sorry lucky <laughs> go for it so for those of us who play heavies you could probably say that heavies don't have as strong sequences as like say like you know lighter characters with like combos and stuff you just say that would you say that like learning sequences is just as valuable for playing heavies or slower characters as us characters? no i shouldn't answer fun sorry uh, how about i no. answer yeah go go go, go, go right. 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 sorry so I'm just reason... gonna. I'm just gonna mute. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep speaking. <laughs> wow, you are helpful. You're you're uh, diverting the aggro. Mm-hmm. Man's man's wearing a colorful feather. So, um, yeah. I mean, with heavies, right? The reason why I chose sequences is that they're universal, right? Heavies even more so, right? Because they have a lot of heavies traditionally have like a sequence or like a conditioning tech, right? Mm-hmm. Like. When you know your opponent's shielding, right, sometimes you have to go for it and believe that your opponent is shielding so you can get, like, the side B, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, are you talking mainly about Bowser, right? Because I think... Yeah, that, well, I saw it coming off Bowser, so, like, leverage. Even things like Fair, like, Bowser does have, like, half-decent frame data, actually. Like, he's got, like, things like Fair and, like... And you can do things like Fair F-Tilt, right? Yeah. Which becomes a f- frame trap, right? Some mm-hmm. sequences are inherently frame traps, right? And they make the opponent want to act because they think you're done. They think you're a big old heavy, but in actuality, you're not done, right? You you keep going. So I would say that they are at least the same for lighter characters. And if not, they're even more so important for sequences, right? Because you can't rely on reacting to the situation. You don't have the frame data for it. So you need to believe in the sequences that you've built up to like believe that you've conditioned them properly. Is that sort of what you were going about, Ernest? Yeah, I think um, it doesn't matter what character. Like, yeah. don't ever think like um, this sort of stuff is only applicable to like fast frame data characters because, like, because that's just like not how you like um play like or like learn like this game, right? Um, it's just sequences don't have they're not binded by like frame data or like amount of like the the plethora of like like options you have in neutral etc they're like it's like based around like a two player system right which every character like has stuff a big like a big advocate of theories is like vermin Ubis. like sorry no, um sequences is like how vermin Ubis like dissects like how he plays right mm-hmm. like he plays ganondorf who's like even worse than bowser oh, yeah. but a lot of his theory like a lot of his sequence of moves are like very calculated and it's just like it's not based off like oh ganon can do like Nair, jab, um, short hop, um, fucking down air, and like option cover, etc. It's like based off like, oh, if I go, if I move here, um, I think he's gonna do this. I can do this and have enough time to to catch that. Mm. So it's it's like a two way two player process. You have to like think about like what your move does that like that would irk a response from the opponent and etc. etc. I don't know how to explain it. I think. Uh... One thing about heavy sequences, like sequences with heavy characters, that is a little different from like fast frame data, kind of like combo heavy characters, is that when you actually make a sequence as a heavy, 
it will actually just have less attacks in it and more movement. Mm. So like you can't do like um something like I'm just gonna back air into spot dodge, or, like back air into back air or whatever what um that like an inkling or a Mario could do um when you're playing Bowser because your moves are just not built for that. Yeah, so in that case, rather than looking at how throwing out one move can force reactions or like what types of reactions it forces, think about like how wet the way that you space around your opponent forces reactions or like uh things that are less committal as well like um force reactions mm. and i think like if you press too many buttons when your character doesn't or shouldn't really have the right to do that then uh you might be going the wrong way that's <laughs> just my take on it <laughs> yeah those are, the, those are the answers I'm looking for, so I'm happy with that. Nice. Cool. Nice. Glad we could help. Right, classic classic Jacob Jacob Yap sequence. Neutral get up, spot touch down to Yeah, neutral get up, baby. <laughs> it sounds it's like a joker good. sequence. Yeah. Right. Nah, That's they like just a... fucking they just fucking down to it after. Yeah, they yeah, don't even down. they don't they don't even <laughs> spot dodge because the spot dodge, the spot dodge is the down to. <laughs> no, the spot yeah. dodge is like the stage two. They're like, guys, <laughs> oh, they figured out that I do neutral get up down tilt. Let me mix it up and they do yeah. get up spot dodge down tilt. Like, I hate you. <laughs> it's all about the timing mix up, right? It is the timing yeah. mix up. Yeah. It's, it's the, the same reason the why people like they do. Uh, what is it? So they're on the ledge. They do roll, and then. Even though I grill them for it and I still punish it, they do like neutral get up, then roll, and you're That's like, you're in the I same do. position. You're in That's the same position, man. <laughs> like, you just gave me more time to charge the F smash. Than I do anyway. <laughs> True. <laughs> then, then like the bigger brain becomes, oh, he just wants center stage, so it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna wait for it. Yeah. And, and then you do it, but then that's hard mm -hmm. because if you if you if you don't have the full on read, and like you're and you want to win the interaction, then life becomes really hard. You're just like, mm -hmm. fuck, do I punish the neutral getup? Do I punish what comes after? The wait? If, yeah. I punish, if, I, if I wait and I guess wrong, then I just lose my advantage. Especially like, if you oh, have like a hurts. good neutral punish, uh, neutral getup punish, like an active move that just stuffs down neutral getup. Yeah, but that's when what Tweak says comes pretty in handy, because it's like, it doesn't really matter if you like, let's say like if you don't punish, right? Because um, chances will come. Um, and it's okay to sacrifice an advantage state if it means yeah. that you get the data for it. I yeah. still can't get by that. Like it's like mm -hmm. the amount of patience. It's too hard. I always thought it was fascinating how the flow of game works. Like even though anything can happen, it's like typically you see like someone get a fifty percent lead, and they're usually like the first ones to like take the stock. Um, because e even if like both players just reset neutral a bunch of times, it's I guess it's that like I don't know like incrementally. You're slowly getting that advantage. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Not against Joker. <laughs> All right, I'm also gonna end the recording right here. Um, right. thanks for watching the VOD analysis. Whoever's listening. Um, Funny, you're gonna do one next week, right? Oh yeah, dude. Yes, yeah, tune in next <laughs> week. Good job. Good yeah. job. Congratulations <laughs> on finally getting it. I'm I'm banned yeah, from Pixel. Gunner. Let's go. Yeah, I'm banned yeah. from Pixel. Honestly, hey. honest to God, I shouldn't congratulate you. This is like I'm not congratulating you for something that's that should have been done. You know, like, like four, four months, months ago. <laughs> yeah, fucking finally, actually. They you took say the best time. time to start was four months ago, but the second best time was now. It was now, exactly. That's you. All right. Got the man at 200%. Alright, tune in next Sub to week. JM League, sub yeah. to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it's you. Alright. Who's Give on us, the next Who's, who's next one? Um, you'll have to find out next week. <laughs>